renewed it, so I'm not going to be renewed. Tell me, just go left. Same order in response. Hold it nice. 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 Hold it
Um, Roy comes to us as a lateral transfer to our police department. And so what that means, for those of you who might not be familiar with the term, is that Roy already has experience as a police officer. So he served with the Waukegan Police Department for the majority of his career. Um, and so he has the police academy and he has a lot of the training that we're normally investing in with a newer officer. So Roy comes to us as a new officer with almost 30 years of experience. Uh, but we're so happy to have him on the team. He is a veteran of the US Marine Corps and um, he specialized in Waukegan in community sur sur oriented policing, community service. He worked for a while in the schools. And um, so he, it, he knows a lot about police work, uh, but he doesn't know a lot about us yet and how we police. So I'm so happy to be starting this adventure with him on the team. And this is the first time we're doing a lateral transfer and we're all hoping it's very successful. Roy actually has already completed his step one of field training, which is, took about a week and a half, which would normally take a full month with a new recruit just out of the academy. So the rest of the steps probably won't go quite as quickly. Um, step one is a lot of very basic and foundational police stuff that Roy knows how to do very well. But we're excited about this accelerated process and excited to have Roy on the team. Thank you. Hey, to Roy. Watch. Welcome on board. Welcome. Is Roy, here? Is Roy online? I yeah, guess. he's the one with the question mark. Oh, okay. But, he is. He's oh, online. Okay. Put on the phone. All right. All right. Welcome. Welcome. And I can add this. Cindy. Okay, and so are we moving on to the next one then? Yes, we are. Oh, okay. Uh, tonight we have for you a presentation um, about our agricultural RCIS program with Cindy Rendell. And I'm going to turn it over to Ed Collins, who's the Director of Land Preservation and Natural Resources, to give you a little background on what you're going to be seeing this evening. Ed? You're going to read on the screen. The power's not turned on. Can everyone hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Yes, Ed, I can. Okay. Um, Cindy, I can't are you see you work, Dean. <laughs> Well, that's, that may be a blessing, Dave. Uh, Cindy, are, are you ready to go? We're not ready for her to go. Okay. Well, I tell you what, I'll do the introduction while you guys are working on that. And I just have a few things to say before uh, Cindy gives you a presentation on our GIS program for agriculture. Um, some of it I've said before, but it bears repeating, and that is that farmland is going to be part of the conservation district for many years. Uh, and not only does it produce income for us, but it also is a crucial step in the long-term goals that we have of restoring habitat. And what I mean by that is whether the farmland is gifted to the district or reacquire it, we often get it in very poor condition. And the farm program allows the land to regain its ecological health prior to us expending uh, some very expensive funds for native seed. And so the FARB program helps elevate the level of potential project success when we do habitat restoration because the land has had some time for the soil to get back in shape. So it's a crucial step in that process. It's not just uh, an income producer. Um, we do this in a couple of ways. One is through our conventional farmland program. Uh, and that allows us to help rebuild soil so that it infiltrates water better, it increases the soil health, it slows down erosion, and it helps the soil biota, those small things that live in the soil, to recover. We also have our joint grassland venture program, and that's primarily a haying program that's designed to allow us to produce hay on land and also to produce uh, breeding grassland birds. So both of those programs get our lands ready or the next phase in habitat restoration. Uh, this is done through three different things, and Cindy is gonna talk about them tonight, but I wanted to introduce them because sometimes the terminology is easy to, to bleed one into another, and, and they're different components of the, of the farm program. 
uh, our farm policy helps set direction for the overall farmland uh, program that the district has. And that's dependent on our farm management system, which Cindy is gonna talk about. So there are really three components, the policy, the program itself, and then the farm management system. The foundation of all of this is having good data to work with, knowing the who and the what, the when and the where, and the how of what occurs on 6,500 acres of farmland that the district administers. So it's, it's a good portion, about a fourth of the district's overall holdings. And what you're gonna to see tonight, what Cindy will present is the result of many district staff working with a number of partners at Liberty Prairie Foundation and the Delta Institute and a couple of funders who helped design and fund the first phase of the farm database. So much of it uh, did not come from the district operational funds. It came from grant funds, including some of Cindy's times, time to, to develop it. But I especially want to thank Cindy, who is the architect of this, Gail Brown, uh, who helps with uh, of agricultural database information, Sandy Rogers, who helps administer the program, Glenn, who I think you all know is our on the ground person, and Randy Rewalt, who got the wonderful task of transcribing several file cabinets full of very old farmland information to be part of the database. So I'll finish up by saying in 2018, when we began this, the farm database consisted of four very large file cabinets filled with files and a scattering of digital lists that had come over in our reorganization in 2013. And I think what you'll see this evening is that things have come a very long way in 24 months. So with that said, I will turn it over to Cindy and uh, take it away. Hi, everybody. Um, bear with me as I try to, I'm gonna try to navigate this and hide some of the screens so I can read through my presentation. And then I'm hoping that I can actually demo some of the system for you. So I will start, so we're just, I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of the program and then what our needs were, um, what the goals of the system were, and then um, the benefits and some of the other changes that occurred as the result of the project. So this is just a little timeline. Um, uh, Wait, hold on. We don't see it yet, Cindy. Oh, okay. Did you share your screen? Oh, see it, it changed my screen. So it didn't, all right, hold on. Okay. It's on his hand up. So I I don't see Can you hit the share screen button at Wait. the bottom? Yes. Everything was minimized, so I didn't realize. Okay. Share. How's that? Oh, you <laughs> yeah, we got it. You got it. Perfect. Okay. Now we can see a timeline. So in in the nineteen seventies we acquired our first farm field. Um, 2001, we had a bond referendum. 2006, uh, we developed the version one of the farm policy. 2007, we had another bond referendum, so we're acquiring more land. Uh, 2013, the program moved over to land preservation and natural resources. And in 2015, uh, we made an update to the farm policy. And about that time, I started with the district and I started getting a lot of requests for maps. And so at that time, I started to look at, well, what, what information do we have? And in 2016, I, uh, I took some time to centralize all of the GIS data that we had um, and try and update the farm parcel data. And in 2018, we worked with um, the Liberty Prairie Foundation, the Delta Institute, and Foresight Design to develop an agricultural conservation index. And in 2020, right now, um, I published our, I redesigned the structure of our database, which I'll be talking about in great detail. 
and publish it um, through our online organization account through Esri's RTI software. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, so for me, developing a system requires me to not only understand the details of what our needs are and requirements within our division, but also the district and how does that information you know, flow back up into the farm program policy itself and our overall mission. So I'm just gonna, I won't read the entire farm policy, but there are pieces of it that I'm just gonna highlight. And I'll start with our mission statement. McHenry County Conservation District exists to preserve, restore, and manage natural areas and open spaces for their intrinsic value and for the benefits to present and future generations. So from, from that, then the farm management program policy, right? The district is responsible for the ecological integrity of each conservation area it owns and must actively manage these lands to prevent the degradation of natural resources contained in them. So the, the farm management program, its intent is to demonstrate that ecologically managed agricultural lands are profitable for the farmer buffer and improve district natural resources and benefit all the citizens of McHenry County by providing open space and groundwater infiltration. And then I just highlighted in green, it's basically just reiterating the benefit of the program, right? These, the farm fields function as buffers for our natural areas. This, this entire program allows us time to generate plans and funding sources for restoration of the land. And ultimately, it contributes to the local agricultural economy. So I'm not sure how many of you have actually seen the farm policy goals, but these are the five main goals from our farm policy. Goal one, to protect and conserve natural resources. Goal two, to build Goal three, to be equitable. Goal four, to promote regenerative agriculture on district land and goal five to support beginning and young farmers. That, that's a high level, right? What does the district do? What does our farm program do? What's its purpose? And then over the last couple of years on various efforts, you know, we have identified very specific needs that, that, that we require of, of the information that we want to collect and do collect. Uh, so this this is a high level list of the major the major needs. So the first one we have here is uh, is accurate data, right? The the ability to provide accurate and up to date farm data for the district and operators, easy access. I mean this this is a big one, right? Enabling access to paper, tabular, digital, and geospatial information for district staff. Mobile data collection. I, I want to be able to access our data out in the field or in the office, you know, or at another office. Um, monitoring management, the ability to track and manage information related to crop summary, conservation practice, implementation, monitoring, and maintenance of our farm fields. And lastly, the agricultural conservation index. We want to take the idea that we developed um, in, in the effort we did in 2018 and integrate that with the, enti the entire farm program information model. And so this the first phase of the project, which I just wrapped up at the early, the early part of 2020, um, we, we met the first three, three needs there. So I developed that good data, I made it easily accessible and available in the field. And that's kind of the piece that we talked about now. Um, so, so once I understand our mission and our goals and what our needs are, then I have to take a look at, okay, what, how, how am I, what, what is the focus for a system, for something, something we can use to manage all the information we want to collect and already have. Um, so these were the main goals for the system. So we, we want to be able to develop a more efficient method for managing our waste 
invoices and payments while providing document management for our, our operators and staff. And you'll see highlighted in blue, I actually tried to relate my system goals to you know, policy goals. Um, develop a method to track lease compliance, conservation practice compliance management and monitoring farm fields. Implement the use of the Agricultural Conservation Index as a method for measuring successful outcomes as outlined in our district research management plan. And lastly, provide an accessible and easy to manage method for reporting and archiving all the output needs from the system. So that, that, that's the details of what we wanted to do. And then this, this is my simplified image of, of what we created. Um, so basically in the center there, we have a farm program. That's the geographical information system where all of our farm program data um, will be stored. And then that system needs to be able to talk to these other two pieces here. So um, on the one side, we have the farm program database. So the output from there, you have our leases and our invoices, farm history, and at some point, the agricultural conservation industry. Out on the other side there is, is making all of that information accessible in the field. You could collect data, you want to view data, or um, summarize data, which is part of what I'm going to show you. So how, how do I go about that? Well, the, the first thing that needs to be done is I need to develop the GIS. And so that there's a lot involved in that, but in a nutshell, it's creating a database. So I need, I need to create all the pieces of information that we want to use to produce maps and reports and summaries and output. Um, so that's, that's the big foundation that will allow us to do all the other things we want to do. So for this, this phase, the first part was creating this database. And then I, I created some web applications and some maps and dashboards. Um, so those are some of what that So the main, the main pieces of the database for the farm program contain three different boundaries and there's a lot of other information in there but these are the these are the main pieces of the database without without all of this you basically can't do any of the other things that we are talking about doing with the information so the first piece of information um, is the farm lease parcel this is used to identify all areas included in a lease agreement then we can identify at that level, I took the time and I, I ran every parcel through sort of environmental impact. And I was able to like and, and other detailed location information is stored at that level. I also took the time to plus and then we're beginning to build some of the farm history for each of those parcels also. So from there, then I created farm fields. And farm fields are used to break down that parcel even further because I could have multiple fields. Um, you know, there could be one field that has hay and another field that's cropland, two fields that are cropland, one pasture. So we have those circumstances and we needed the ability to, to identify use type at those individual field levels. And then we will be working on an effort to also identify the resource goals, um, erodibility, and you know the future of each of those fields at that level. And then lastly, um, the farm conservation areas. These are new. Historically, we had pieces of, of these fields or these areas in different locations in our GIS, um, but uh, I'm really excited about that piece of it because I already use that piece of it, providing summer planning. So the farm conservation areas are things like our strips, our field borders, waterways, existing water, um, another buffer.
so once I was able to create all of that data, then I was able to create what is called a web application in GIS and a dashboard. So the, da the dashboards are, uh, it, it just provides a single location where we can summarize the farm program or impacts or resources or, or whatever we dream up. Um, and the web application then allows me to take multiple dashboards and summaries or maps and, and compile it all together. So I have a single location um, to go to to have managers or staff go to where they can look at this information over time. I, I'm going to demo, so bear with me. I'm going to stop the share and then share the uh -huh. yeah. Okay, can everybody see this? Yes. Okay, so this is this is our web application. So we we have an online organization account through ArcGIS, and right now it's all internal. It's only accessible by uh, users of our ArcGIS online account. Um, but this this is a web application, and I have tabs up here that were created for different things. So um, this first tab here is basically just a map of our of our farm fields. So I can zoom in and out. I can click on a parcel and view the information related to it. Scroll back out. Um, users can actually create data from this location also. Um, so it's pretty useful. Uh, then we can go to, I'm going to, what are we looking at? The farm program dashboard. So this dashboard just uh, shows us a summary of the farm lease parcels. So we, I can create all kinds of different different pieces of information. It's it's really you know what what information do we want to look at? What do we want to see? And what do we want to better understand so we can you know use some of that information to make decisions about what we're doing on the landscape. So we have 106 active farm lease parcels. Out of that, we have 160 farm fields, and. Um, it, this graph might be hard to see, but the farm field use type, right? We, I can identify, I can summarize by use type. If we look over here, we're, we can look at the farm conservation areas and I've got 300 acres of field border, 171 acres of filter strip, and what do we got for grass? 15 acres of grass waterway. Um, and then this area down here, this shows you the total acre for our farm conservation area. Mm, I'll show you one more dashboard and then wrap this up. Uh, we did take the time to identify various environmental impacts also. Um, so this, this particular dashboard is looking at a few of those attributes. Um, We'll start over here. So the number of cropland parcels that are 500 feet from a TME wildlife observation, 83 out of our 106. So most of our farm parcels. The number of cropland parcels that are within 500 feet of water, 72. And um, 10 of the parcels are within 500 feet of a known TME plant observation. And if we look at over here, we've got 1,300 acres that are highly erodible land. Um, and then this little pie chart here, this kind of just breaks down the actual attribute assigned. So we have highly erodible land, unidentified highly erodible land, and not highly erodible land. So this, I, I am very excited about the, what this means because I, I can go and, and edit my data over here and those charts are automatically updated. Um, so this is all live data. 
Um, and this, this, is, this is something I'm hoping to get more of our managers using so that instead of you know, having to wait for me for an answer, you know, this information can be readily available, especially for specific questions that we might have frequently. So we can start to develop some of those summaries so that they're just always available. All right, let me take it back to the presentation. Are we good? Yeah. All right. Okay. So um, once once we develop a system, we typically change the procedures that we had historically used to manage information. And sometimes we aren't managing information, right? In our case, a lot of the farm data um, are stored on paper files. Uh, so there were there were a few changes. Uh, regarding our standards and procedures that came up during this phase of the effort. So things like we decided to use a farm lease parcel ID versus a farm parcel name. And then um, we standardized our leases a little bit by incorporating the joint grassland venture conservation practices directly into the lease template. Um, I'll be working with Sandy to update our legal description and um, we also were making changes how we're filing a lot of the information digitally on the network. And then I, I took some time to standardize some of my map making templates. So the bid and lease maps can be generated all at once. Um, I created a template we can use to contact it so they can fill out information and send it back to us. Um, so things like that that will hopefully make our our process a little bit more efficient. So the old system and the new system. Our old system, um, we had a lot of information in a lot of different places, and we're still working through a lot of this. Um, but uh, if you can imagine, if if I wanted to find out how many acres of of a conservation area I did that I have and, and it's stored in a paper file somewhere, I'd have to go and pull each one of those paper files to, to get those acres and then, you know, summarize that. So now we've got this new system and that's just kind of a, a, an example that shows what the table structure looks like in my database. So the hope is that we can reduce some of our time spent searching for and creating information every time we have a new request. The benefits obviously are we, we can reduce time spent locating and organizing data. Um, we can ensure the security of the data for future use. The ability to compare and analyze data will help improve our decision making. Um, the ability to share data across the organization and with producers. And we're enabling district staff to better reach the farm policy goals. And the next step. So this is a high level 2019-2020, that was what I just finished, which is basically creating the foundation for doing these next two efforts. So right now I'm working on developing the information model to uh, track and manage crop summary information and management information and monitoring. And then the last part of the effort is really the final reporting um, component of the information system. So moving that agricultural conservation index from a Google form into a relational database so we can use that long term. Oh, that's what I got. Boy, I sure wish I could have seen it. <laughs> we need a copy for you, Dave. Yeah. Only I'm not going to mail it to you, Dave, because this is when we'll get started. <laughs> Thank you. That was great, Cindy. Thank you. Yeah, it was very nice. Thank you. Appreciate it. Very Thanks. good. That was great. Okay, we're going to move on to trustees report. Any trustee have anything they want to report? All good? Well, I, maybe one thing. I, I volunteered to be um, Kishwaukee River Ecosystem Partner CREP. 
uh, 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 board uh, representative, and we're having a meeting this the 28th. I forget what day this is, but whatever the 28th is. So I'll report that next month. Okay, sounds good. Do we have, so if we move on to nine, all oh, county board liaison, do we have Bob? I did not see him on. Okay. So move, move on the president's report. I don't have anything other than what all of you already know. So we can move on to public comments. Do we have public public that wants to comment? Cindy doing that. Wendy. Wendy's doing that. Wendy. Wendy, anyone want to comment? She's shaking her head. No, I think I can. I'm not seeing any hands up. Okay. So that's moving on then. Well, I know the agenda. So Lynn, you'd like to make that motion, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd love to make the motion. All right, so I move that we approve the consent agenda, which includes the following. 12.1, approval of minutes of previous meetings. 12.1A, July 14, 2020, finance and admin. 12.1B, July 16, 2020, committee the whole. 12.1C, July 21, 2020, regular monthly meeting, 12.1D, June 18, 2020, executive session. 12.2, acceptance of the treasurer's report. This is 12.2A, July 31, 2020. 12.3, resolution number 2066, a resolution accepting the fiscal year 2021 through fiscal year 2023 strategic plan tactics work plan as presented. 12.4, second reading ordinance number 20-990, an ordinance amending the comprehensive administrative policy and procedure manual 2.04.06, remote participation 2.04.08, storage and disposal of meeting recordings, and 4.01, records retention dash public access. 12.5, resolution number 20-67, a resolution authorizing the purchase of three replacement vehicles directly off the Illinois State Bid Purchasing Contract for total cost not to exceed $90,000. 12.6, resolution number 20-68, a resolution authorizing the executive director to execute a contract with Petro Choice of Elgin, Illinois, the lowest responsible and is responsive bidder for unleaded and diesel fuels at plus .2 700 per gallon over my market price the day the fuel is delivered for a period of one year starting September 1, 2020 and ending August 31, 2021. Resolution point to 12.7. Resolution number 20-69, a resolution authorizing the executive director to execute a contract with Amerigas Propane ZP LLC of Gurney, Illinois, the lowest responsible and responsive bidder for the purchase of propane fuel at a cost not to exceed $1.005 per gallon for a period of one year starting September 1, 2020 and ending August 31, 2021. 12.8, authorization to prepare specification and let bids for the purchase of native seed for standard mixes for countywide land preservation and natural resources division projects. 12.9, authorization for staff to begin the negotiation process on the listed agricultural leases on 20 parcels containing approximately 1,866.39 plus or minus acres. All right, I'm just going to name the parcels. Do we care about the amount? It's on the, that's fine. Okay, so, so we're talking Coral Woods, Pleasant Valley, uh, Beckwood, Queen Anne, uh, Columpton, Pleasant Valley, Winding Creek. Pleasant Valley, the Kincaid, Brookdale, Lashbaugh, uh, Queen Anne, Menke, um, Kishwaukee Quarter, Monaco, Kishwaukee Quarter, O'Connor, Brookdale, Paulson, Hollows, Pitchin, Brookdale, Plumtree National, Brookdale, Roberts, Kishwaukee Corridor, Rose, Kishwaukee Corridor, um, Sultis, Coral, the Coral Woods. Wood, William O'Leary, Queen Anne, Wolf Bluff Creek. 
12.10, authorization for staff to begin the negotiation process on the joint grassland venture leases on nine parcels containing approximately 245.42 plus or minus acres. Boone Creek, Coral Woods, Kling Parcel, Goose Lake, Lind Woods, Marengo Ridge, Pleasant Valley, Silver Creek, Winding Creek, and Winding Creek slash Bailey Woods. 12.11, resolution number 20-70, a resolution authorizing the executive director to execute a license agreement uh, with L.L. Bean for the use of the Hollows Conservation Area and Cell Pro RRR and Prairie View Education Center for paddleboard, archery, and fly casting classes. 12.12, resolution number 20-71, a resolution acknowledging November 3rd, 2020, as a 2020 general election day per public act 101-0642 and to recognize it as a one-time paid holiday for calendar year 2020. 12.13, resolution number 2072, a resolution authorizing the payment to the McHenry County Treasurer for the 2020 second installment of property taxes and fees in an amount not to exceed $87,833. 12.14, resolution number 20. 73, a resolution authorizing the executive director to execute an intergovernmental agreement granting license for facility use with the Illinois Nature Preserve Commission for office space at Lost Valley Visitor Center. 12.15, ordinance number 20-991, an ordinance authorizing the execution of a land preservation project and gift agreement and the memorandum of understanding with McHenry County Conservation Foundation the Henry County Conservation District, and James and Bonnie Lake. 12.16, resolution number 2074, a resolution authorizing membership in the Northwest Health Insurance Pool subpool of the Intergovernmental Personnel Benefit Cooperative. 12.17, resolution number 20-75, a resolution motion authorizing the Executive Director to execute an agreement with Psychic LLP of Naperville, Illinois, to serve as the district's independent auditors and perform audit services for fiscal years ending March 31, 2021 and 2022 at a cost of $21,800 and $22,250 respectively. Thank you. I second. Grant. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> okay, so I have a motion made and seconded for the consent. Uh, motion. Uh, would you like to ro call roll? Sure. Trustee Thomas, yes. Trustee Brandt? Yes. Trustee Fritz? Yes. Trustee Campbell? Yes. Trustee Cook? Yes. And Trustee Henning? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Well, thank you. I should tell you if you ever want a break in that, well, I can take over for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Other board business. Approval of bill payable. For the month of July 2020, uh, for the internal audit, uh, so we need pull free bills. Do they have any they want to pull? Dave, have you worked on that? I have. Um, All right, I'll good. I'll one. Count on you. <laughs> okay, first one is I-7819, Secretary of State Police for $151. And I'll see if anybody else has anything. Um, I Hearing have none. The, oh, go ahead. I, Never mind. Got one. Oh, that's okay. It doesn't matter. I, uh, C seven seven eight five Captain Rod boat list. Hey Dave, do you have another one? I do. Uh, N uh, eight five five nine uh, Northern Illinois Service Company for six hundred twenty three dollars even. Met our requirement there. Okay, that'll move us on to consideration to prove. Uh, so, does it, if I guess if we don't hear anything and we're assuming that those are fine when Andy checks them out, if he, if he finds a problem, he's going to let us know. We would. Yeah. Well, no, he, he in in the uh, uh, packet he uh, shows the bills right. and they were all right. according to yeah. policy, so we're good. But we'd have a discussion about it. If, if, yeah, I guess we would I'm, say, I'm, hey, we found something. Yeah, I guess I'm letting, I guess, the public know and everything. That's what we would do. 
Okay, Treasurer's Internal Audit, we did that. Consideration to approve the payment to Conserve FS as indicated on submission of bill pending report. Okay, so does anybody want to make a motion to pay Conserve FS? Pat makes a motion. Bill will second. Uh, no discussion, call roll. Trustee Brandt. Yes. Trustee Fritz. Yes. Trustee Campbell. Yes. Trustee Thomas. Yes. Trustee Cook. Yes. Trustee Penny. Yeah, I'll abstain. Oh, yes. Okay, then we have, if somebody would like to make a motion to pay the balance of the bill. So moved. Bill would make that motion. Is there a second? Linda, okay. Linda thank you. Uh, can you call the roll? Trustee Campbell. Yes. Trustee Thomas. Yes. Trustee Brandt. Yes. Trustee Cook. Yes. Trustee Fritz. Yes. And Trustee Henning. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Our next motion up is consideration of a resolution authorizing the executive execution of a professional service agreement for engineering services for the stream erosion and trail stabilization of the Prairie Trail South. And I assume they got as far as they needed to go with all of that. Yes, I would like to, um, we do have a resolution for you, an agreement for an option of $63,000. For full disclosure, um, based on the communication that we sent the board last Thursday night, um, staff has received after, and again, I don't know exactly where the confusion, but um, the pricing from Hay and Associates. Um, Hay and Associates um, has done work with the district before. Um, so everything is legal. Um, during an RFQ process, there's two ways to approach it. Staff can review. They did do a very methodical review uh, without looking at pricing and selected their top firm. What ended up happening is an email that was dated prior, um, that did come to the district prior to um, the 21st, uh, which was the day that the letter of the agreement was shared. So I did find that out. Um, actually, uh, just on Monday, I looked into that over uh, the, when I got an email back with the proposal, I kind of looked into that on Friday. So again, everything is legal. I've talked with council. We have done work with them. But um, obviously, it's more of a process step that, that wasn't uh, as I would have liked. OK, but well, we're good to go today. And the 63000 is that about what they thought it would be, or I can't remember, is that what they um, I believe so, and I believe John's online with the total pull up the board summary that we had initially uh, as a request. Yeah, the, uh, the projection on it was uh, when we budgeted uh, about a year ago was 60, 65000 uh, and that was based on what we knew was coming in on the projects. Um, in the Ringwood area, uh, we knew that, uh, so we kind of extrapolated from that, so we actually hit the mark. You're very good. Does anybody else have any questions, comments? Somebody like to sponsor no. that resolution? <laughs> I will. Okay, Bill? If you want me to read it? Yeah, I, you can or I can, either one of us. Okay. Uh, resolution. 20-76, authorizing the executive director to execute a professional services agreement with Hay and Associates of Volo for a cost not to exceed $63,000 for engineering services for the stream erosion and trail stabilization of the Prairie Trail South. Thank you. Lynn has a second. Does anybody have any more discussion? Seeing none, call the roll. Dusty Fritz. Yes. Trustee Cook. Yes. Trustee Campbell. Yes. Trustee Thomas. Yes. Trustee Brandt. Uh, for a full disclosure, uh, one of the principals is a very good friend of mine, so I recuse myself. Okay, thank you. Trustee Henning. Yes. Motion passes on a vote of five to zero with one recusal. Bring us up to thirteen three. We don't know about this one, or are we all good to go? We're good to go on it. Anybody want to sponsor that resolution? Sure, I will. Okay, Lynn, is Hi. you going to read it? Sure. Read it? Um, I moved uh, that we, for the consideration of a resolution authorizing the submission of, well, I moved that we uh, approve the resolution authorizing the submission 
of a Federal Lands Access Program grant application submittal for improvements to the Hearts Road access to Glacial Park Conservation Area and associated trail and wildlife improvements. Point of order that's resolution 20-77. Exactly, I just saw the meeting there, sorry. Okay. Any discussion by anyone? All the roll. Trustee Brandt. Yes. Trustee Cook. Yes. Trustee Fritz. Yes. Trustee Campbell. Yes. Trustee Thomas. Yes. And Trustee Hines. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Yeah, that moves us to Executive Director's report. Okay. Um, I gave you a lot on uh, Thursday night, so I'll be very brief uh, this evening. Um, the legislative update uh, to begin with, um, I believe I shared the American Great Outdoors Act with the Money for Land and Water Conservation Fund. So that is that is big. We fought years and years and years with many trips to Washington, D.C. Uh, and so that is great news. And so uh, that will be fully appropriated. Um, and so uh, that will uh, have impact. Also, um, the uh, funding for OSLAD, again, everybody in the special district areas, parks and conservation forests or districts, an amazing job to ensure uh, that OSLAD uh, would retain its funding and so more to come, but there are a lot of grants that are still being in that we're looking at and trying to make our dollars go a lot farther so those opportunities do exist. Um, we're waiting to see what's happening with COVID and obviously we had, uh, you know, two weeks with uh, at the larger level of what's happening for elections in November. Um, and we've got our, our date off in November for elections, and then probably all through COVID, um, you know, there'll be more things up and coming that we'll just, uh, things will start to hit, and uh, we'll be reporting on. So um, that's, that's a, bad news. Um, as far as COVID, um, I did want to share, you know, we are continuing to stay socially distanced to, to do the work. Our numbers are up. We shared with you a lot of the social media. Uh, listings of just to see what impact we're having from Google Analytics and photographs that are out and people using their smartphones when they're out on conservation district sites. And uh, it is wonderful to see um, our sites are being loved and used, and, uh, and that is awesome. Um, the grants we did apply for for reimbursement, and we just received word um, that that will be funded. So $46,000, correct, John, on that? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, it's um, the district spent to date. I'm going to use some round numbers here. The district has spent to date um, like 35,000 on it, uh, and all of that appears eligible. And then, in addition to that, we project that we'll be spending about another 11,000 between um, basically July 1 and uh, December 30th, uh, and all of that appears to be eligible. So, that's uh, that's our target. What? right Wonderful, John. Us. Wonderful. Okay, so that will help us with all those additional expenses we weren't anticipating. And uh, again, great to have. So great job on that. Uh, we did, uh, through council, um, after our meeting last week, I did speak with special counsel on the 300 West. And um, the neighbors have received, there is a meeting that's scheduled for September 23rd uh, at 630 in the evening. I will send that information out. We are preparing to be there. We have not yet received an invitation from the health Department, um, Board of Health, um, but we assume that will be forthcoming. But the date is September 23rd. Um, the, uh, there's a couple of events, and I'll send it out in the weekly update on everybody's doing virtual uh, luncheon meetings. And so um, we've got the IEGG, that's the best, Open Land has their virtual um, luncheon. Um, the Illinois Environmental Council does as well. So I will send that out to everyone. Um, the fall landscapes is out and registration is open. Uh, there was a great article in the Northwest Herald today on our outdoor concerts. So um, we normally had concerts out on the deck uh, at Glacial Park, uh, but this year with social distancing, we are limiting the number of people and we are charging a fee. So um, we will see how that goes when uh, those uh, tickets fail. Um, and then so I'll, I'll just leave you with, there was a great article uh, in the Tribune um, that appeared um, just this week, and they were talking about why Chicago parks uh, are so crowded during the COVID pandemic. We've been talking about our increased usage out on our sites, and they were looking, and of course, 
um, they don't have enough space to support the population density that they have. And so everybody's flocking to these areas. Obviously, the lakeshore, um, you know, there were limitations that were placed on there, but it really reveals that due to climate, um, the city needs more green space. So, again, a great message back to great, so we've already, our voters here in McHenry County have protected those natural areas and that. Uh, they had the foresight to, to do what's right. So, again, I just thought that was great information, and that's all I have. Can I ask a question? Uh, with the kids going back to school throughout McHenry County, um, how does that affect what our education department is able to do in, in re relation to COVID and remote learning and, you know, their normal programs versus what they're going to be able to do this fall? Sure. Well, I believe Wendy's online and she can probably share, but they've done a lot of material and prep for outreach and virtual programming. But Wendy, what are you guys specifically doing? Yeah, so, so far we're still seeing people participate in our announced programs that you see in landscapes. Um, but right now they have nine field trips that they would usually have students come to us or we would go to them that they're creating as virtual. So they're working with Caitlin and Pack and Jitting those up so they're reaching out to all the teachers and, and um, making contact and trying to fill their needs as much as possible as well as, as, well as these CAN programs um, that they've gotten together. So they are, you know, rolling with the times, so to speak, and looking three months ahead and kind of and trying to anticipate these needs far out. The other thing that we, we've just added kind of late in the fall, um, Elizabeth probably doesn't even know about this, is that conservation kids activities in a box for like after school programs. Um, so the kids that just want to get outside and get away from being online. Um, we give them instructions to do kind of like little nature activities and crafts at home. So we're adding to those types of programs just to stimulate kids since we can't get to them, but they can do it more of those do it yourself DIY DIY programs. So yeah, we're rolling. Thanks, Wendy. I, I just want to say, um, I should have said it before, congratulations on making this record. Oh, wasn't that a great article? Oh, oh my gosh. It was a fantastic article in the Northwest Herald. Yeah, hey there. Wildlife, right? Wildlife is, resonates. Um, and so kudos to our Wildlife Resource Center and the work that they did and the here to push that information. Sometimes we're lucky that the Northwest Herald or other will pick up a story and run with it. Um, and uh, our social media, we push a lot of stuff out, but that was one that was just a great, great uh, wildlife interest story. It was, it was <laughs> fine. Okay, thank you, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Are you? I'm done. Are, are we, are we, okay, good. <laughs> thank you. Okay, uh, committee assignments and reports. Uh, Lynn, you're up first with Fox River Ecosystem. Okay, so um, it's actually tomorrow, and everything is on Zoom, so I can send out a link because you do have to register, uh, but they're doing um, a, what it is tomorrow is our FREP membership meeting program. So it's starting at 1 o'clock. Um, it's about plastics in our watershed. Um, what do you know about plastic? Okay, i got to get this out of my way. Um, what happens to the plastics you put in your recycling bin? Uh, what can we do about plastic pollution and single-use plastic? And I, I think that they've also been able to identify how they can measure plastic in the water. So that's tomorrow. I'll send out a link if, if you're interested. Again, uh, you do need to register to get on. And I think um, October uh, is going to be a new network. So that's October 14th. It's always the second Wednesday of the month. The program is Tack Matack on National Wildlife uh, Refuge, and it's uh, it, it's presence in our watershed. And the presenters are Nancy Williamson and Steve Byers, and it's going to again be by Zoom. <laughs> Let's get that out to everybody. Thank you, uh, Dave. You were next, and did you report already on the on the crap that you're, that's coming up? <laughs> yes, apparently I was a little premature, but yep. That's okay. All right, that's taken care of. Okay, um, Ed, are you there for wrap? Uh, yes, I am. I don't have much new to report. I am still um, helping out with editing some of the some of the language in the report, but I have nothing new to report. Okay, thank you. Uh, Elizabeth, 
Chicago Wilderness? Yes, so um, online, I'll send out a link to you. There are a lot of great webinars that have been ongoing with our vision and different working groups. So um, they just had one we're working on setting up our goals with water. Um, we had one on agriculture, the green economy, um, the people and nature kind of benefits, and so that's being shaped. Um, we're also working um, to prepare for uh, some training and education on uh, the diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, to be forthcoming. Um, and then um, the alliance is, um, we'll do their, uh, we're still in a Zoom type format as well. So anybody that would like to attend, it's not a trip in Chicago. And so uh, the next meeting uh, will be in October. That's all I have. Hey, Pat. Uh, nothing really to report. Okay, and the next one is, uh, well, there's three of them. But anyway, Dave or Elizabeth, either one of you have anything to for that one? Elizabeth, help, please. Okay. So the Illinois Association of Conservation Forest Preserve Districts met last Thursday for a Zoom meeting. And so we talked about some of the funding that we have and how we could do a member initiative or something that would help all of the uh, suburban conservation forests or districts and those that are part of the organization. So more to come on that. We will meet again in January. Um, the IATD has their best of the best, and that will be in October. Um, we have not yet found out whether we will be receiving the award that was submitted on our work uh, during the COVID as a partnership. Um, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, Dave Grant will be recognized with a 10-year service anniversary. Uh, so um, that will be happening. And then uh, NRPA uh, will be doing their virtual conference. It was supposed to be held in uh, Orlando, Florida this October, but that has all gone virtual. So great opportunities for staff and others to participate. I have not yet heard whether IPRA or IETC will be virtual yet. That's still being determined. And then there's also a survey that has gone out. There is a subgroup of um, that's trying to understand the professional needs of those that are working in conservation districts and forest preserve districts so that those needs will be met better in our state system. Can I, just, I have. Can I add something too? Because I meant to mention this before, but um, you had sent out the uh, indication that you had been accepted and you're going to be presenting at IAPD on, on the pandemic preparedness report and all the work that was done here at the district. And I think Jenny's going to be... Jenny and others will decide who the panel is going okay. to be and what it's going to shape. I had to get an entry in, so I, 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 I gave it a title and it was accepted. So. Well, I think that's great. And I think it's going to be nice to be able to highlight the, the work that the staff did. Absolutely. So I wanted to throw that in there. Thank you. Linda, Foundation? Sure. Um, Pam Alsop is the official board member, um, trustee, board of trustees, to the foundation, which um, I feel that she is a great asset. Um, the Rainbow Ridge update of 15 acres is now owned by the Conservation Foundation. Um, fences are down, deer stands are down, um, it's all done by a neighbor. And Owned now by a nonprofit, and they're going to transfer the district at some point. Um, I sent you all an email. They want to get the board of trustees together via Zoom uh, to kind of coordinate timing. So if you haven't gotten to me, please do. The agenda, that's up to, the, that's up to John and Tom. Um, Fred. Yeah, Fred. So that's there. I'm just coordinating time, and then as soon as I hear from everybody, I will get back to Shauna and see what we can do there. Um, Linda, is it, are they looking for evening primarily? Yeah, I think, I think it is evening. Okay. Evening. All so, right. um, yeah. I'll right. flush any time. Okay. I know. I, uh, I, can't I don't know. Okay. I will. They are um, looking at some more projects um, to help the district with. One would be the 50th anniversary. 
Thank you, Linda. Secretary, uh, Lynn, you have uh, the next one, Center County Council of McCog. Yeah, McCog, they haven't been meeting. Um, I think they're, uh, I went back to their website. I, I was meant to give Shaylin a call just to see if they're going to start to plan anything, um, maybe more in a Zoom or virtual. Uh, but right now, they're, they're not planning anything through October. So it's possible they'll try something after that. And that's it. Was this a uh, shared successful study? Uh, no update on the uh, John Kramer, map? No meetings, no updates. Okay. Anybody else have any other outreach contacts that they need to report on? I do. Oh, very good, Anne. Um, as Helen will be speaking at Green Drink on September 2nd on the way, uh, fourth wave of conservation. It'll be virtual via Zoom. Yeah, so Green Wonderful. Green system, yeah, that's the first Wednesday of every month. And um, I forget what the topic is after that. I think it's, is it uh, the aqua? Yeah. Aqua cremation is the next month after that. But definitely check in for September because he does the great speech. Um, it's I, I second that. I second yeah. that, Carolyn. I do. Thanks. Great. Okay, thanks, Sam. All right. Seeing no others, I will go on to public comment number two. Do we have any? Anybody want to speak? I don't see a hand raised. It does not look. Okay, then we're going to go into um, executive session if I have a motion to do so. We need an executive session? Does anybody have a reason? I don't. Okay, if we don't have a reason, that's great. Yeah, I don't think so at this point. <clears throat> All right, then we have a motion. We have a motion to adjourn. Is that what I got now? <laughs> Are we there already? We don't have to reconvene because we didn't go out. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to reconvene. Yeah, we're not going to reconvene. We'll skip that part. We all have to work that in. We're all going to adjourn. Boom, we adjourn. And panel second. Yeah. Uh, can I have the roll call, please? Trusty Brandt. Yes. Trusty Britt. Yes. Trusty Campbell. Yes. Trusty Cook. Yes, we're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, Dave. Good night.